Welcome to It's All About the Questions, where learning to ask the right questions can help you achieve lifelong success. Now, here to help you ask all the right questions is award-winning author, international speaker, and business strategist, Laura Stewart. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. It is so great to be here with you all today. It's a sunny Tuesday morning for me here. I don't know what it's looking like for you wherever you are in the world listening via iHeartRadio or uh, Waxy AMFM locally here. You know what the weather's like. And then also on the podcast. Thank you all for listening and for following on all the social media I've got out there at the Laura Stewart is Twitter, and we love your comments. So today we have something a little unusual for you. Unusual in that I've always wanted to have her on my show, and now is the perfect time to do it. I've got um, a, a renowned astrologer on the show, Leslie McGurk. She's a friend who is also a children's author with over 2 million copies of her children's books in print worldwide. And now she is stepping into another part of our life that she hasn't shared with a lot of people. She is a renowned astrologer, and she has a new book out called The Power of Mercury, Understanding Mercury Retrograde and Unlocking the Astrological Secrets of Communication, put out by HarperCollins, her publisher. And it's just such a joy to have her here because I've always felt that Mercury Retrograde impacts my life and the lives of my clients greatly. So now we've got somebody who can actually explain why and what it's all about. So welcome to the show, Leslie. Thank you so much. Here I am, uh, an expert on communication, and I feel like I can barely talk with this cold, but hopefully you can hear me okay. Well, what I think is so hysterical is, you know, you've been doing this book tour all around the country, and you're going to talk some more about this. You were born during Mercury Direct. As soon as Mercury goes, I mean, between by Mercury Retrograde, as soon as Mercury went direct, you got sick. Right. <laughs> Normally people get sick during Mercury Retrograde. Yeah, that, that's exactly the point, that everything is the reverse for those of us who are born during Mercury Retrograde. So here everybody talks about it all the time, but very few people know what it really means. Okay, so explain what it really means. Okay, so... It's a period of time that happens uh, three times a year for a couple weeks, and everyone freaks out because everything goes kafooey, like the car will break down or the computer will break, and everything with communication seems to go funky. But it doesn't mean that it's a negative thing. It just means that it's a time when we're supposed to go into reverse. So think of it as we're driving cars and we're going forward all the time, and when it goes into reverse, someone could say, well, that's a terrible thing. I can't get to where I want to go. I'm so frustrated. But then if you're stuck in your garage, you're thrilled you can put it in reverse because then you can get out. So it doesn't have to be a negative. That's really important that I get that across to people, that astrology is not um, what people think it is. A lot of them just think it's the horoscopes in the back of magazines and fortune telling. But I don't look at it that way at all. I look at it more as an imprinting system and as a way to sort of figure out a way to flow through life better. So... If you were born during Mercury retrograde, like myself, that means you're only part of 20% of the population. When it is Mercury retrograde, those are our best times. And that's why I had the book come out during Mercury retrograde. I just did a TEDx talk at UCLA last week, and that was during the Mercury retrograde, and it went really well. And um, it's a positive thing. Now when it goes direct, everyone else is so happy because they're moving forward, but it's actually, for me, the backward time for me. Now, astrology has been around for as long as I've read about. I mean, Hippocrates, who's considered the founding father of um, medicine, really, made his students study astrology. Why is it that there's still such a stigma to it? It's one thing I'm trying so desperately to get it back to what it really is. Um, I have no idea why it got so off the rails, but it did. Uh, it, the second part of the Hippocratic Oath, basically, from Hippocrates, said that any man who practices medicine and doesn't know how to read a chart is not a doctor but a fool. And what I believe is that everything in nature has a pattern, whether it's a snowflake or a tree trunk, and we're part of nature, and we have a pattern as well. That's all that astrology is. It's the system of reading a person's pattern. Or think of it another way, Laura, imagine that every seed, when you look at it, just looks like a little thing in the palm of your hand, and that little seed could become a mango tree or an oak tree or a rose bush. 
you don't know when you're looking at it what it's capable of, but if you know how to read the system of that seed, you can tell where is the best place to plant it and how to nurture it. That is exactly the same for us. We also come from a seed, and we have a system of, of where we would best thrive, and an astrologer can tell people that. It sort of sounds like the way you just described it, astrology is similar to DNA in that it maps and shows you the possibilities of what could happen based on your pattern, in this case, the astrology pattern versus the genetic pattern, and then what you might need to do to have your best life possible, both physically for the DNA and otherwise for your astrology. Does that exactly. make sense? I mean, okay. I mean, I'm desperate to have a scientist study what I do, because if it wasn't scientific, I wouldn't be as accurate as I am. And I can see in family charts, like if I do a mother, a daughter, and a grandmother, you can see the family patterns of alcoholism, which are in our DNA, or other things. And I think that it's fascinating that in The Economist magazine last November, there was an article not trying to prove astrology, but indirectly it did. They were saying that the planets absolutely have an effect on what goes on here down on Earth. Well, the most common one that people think about is how they say all the crazy people came out at the full moon. And then if the full moon coincides with the high tide, it just seems to affect people physically. The ERs are full, all of that. I mean, that's a proven scientific statistical fact. Right. I effect. use that example a lot because we're 90% water. So the moon has an influence on us. And yet people will say, oh, well, um, astrology is just woo-woo, ridiculous. Well, I don't know. There's a, a, bo- a rock floating up in the sky that's affecting human beings, which nobody's going to disagree about that. Well, why is it that they will say that all the other rocks floating out there in space aren't affecting us? Because they are. Why do you think that is that people are so afraid of astrology? Well, I think for good reason, actually, Laura, because there are a lot of people who can misuse this um, science. And if someone goes to an astrologer who's not skilled with words and doesn't know how to translate it in an appropriate way, it can be very dangerous. And it's one reason why the Bible says to stay away from fortune tellers, which I actually agree with to a degree, because there's something about astrology that's a lot like a knife. And when a knife is used well, it's brilliant for cutting food and vegetables or carving. But if used incorrectly, it could be dangerous. And I I do feel people should be careful with astrology, because imagine there is a system of understanding your personal wiring, and somebody misreads it or doesn't give the best advice, it could be not such a good thing. And I've had clients come to me who have been damaged by other astrologers. So, you know, I'm very careful, um, because I think it's a profound system that, unfortunately, not many people really understand it. And so I'm desperate to try to teach people how to read charts so that it's not just me knowing how to do this. Well, you you mentioned, excuse me, having my own voice problems this morning. (laughs) You mentioned that people can be damaged by astrology. Is it really they're damaged by the astrology or is they're damaged by the person reading the chart who can focus, say, on all the negatives and make somebody fearful? Yeah, well, that's what I mean. It's the human interpretation. It's like music. Um, Astrology is like reading music. We were born with a song to sing, and if someone plays that song badly because they're not that skilled as a musician, that person might leave not feeling very good about their future. For example, I had a client who went to an astrologer who told her she would never get married because her seventh house of marriage was empty. And this poor woman... Those words went deep into her spirit, and she had never been married. She was in her late 40s, I think, and I just said, that's not true. When something is empty, it means it's easy. So she gave you the completely opposite advice I would have given you. And words are powerful. Forget about astrology. Words are powerful. And if you go to someone and they put words into your head that are not uplifting and positive, that can be a very negative thing, no matter who does it. Yeah, whether it's astrology or not, it really doesn't matter. Right, but the people who are into power trips and start studying astrology, that's a scary combination. (laughs) So how do you know if somebody's a good astrologer or the right astrologer for you? Uh, That's a tricky one. Um, I I guess um, word of mouth, if you have friends who have gone to someone and they like them, um, or find books 
written by authors that write astrology books that you like and write to them and see who they suggest or if they're doing readings. There are not that many people out there that are really um, that skillful, and I'm, I'm concerned that this amazing gift we have on planet Earth is going to disappear. I hope it doesn't, because I think it's incredibly useful, especially for children. Why so for children? Well, um, I was 19 when I went to an astrologer, and she basically saved my life. Um, she saw that I was very creative, and I was not doing anything creative at all, and she completely redirected me, and everything she said was useful, skillful, and correct. So imagine the gift of astrology for parents to understand the wiring of their children so they can get them on the right path. I saw a movie once called Gattaca. Have you ever seen that? No. The, the premise of the movie is that your, your path in life has been predetermined for you. And if you have a, a DNA issue or something like that, that you... it prevents you from going into any other field of study. So people would take over somebody else's life to be able to do something that they want to do because maybe they have a a potential for a bad heart. They don't have it, but they have a potential for a bad heart. And what it sounds like you're saying is with astrology, it can show you all the possibilities, not just some areas you may want to think twice about, but it shows you so many possibilities you might not have even thought about being in existence for yourself. That's exactly it. And there are more than one uh, ways to do your chart as well, but you have complete free will. There is no fortune telling involved. It's not possible. However, like reading a seed, if, if the seed I know is going to grow up into a banana tree, I'm going to suggest you don't plant it in Alaska because it will die. So there are certain things that are just really important, and that's what the astrologer did for me. She said, you are so creative. If you don't use this, this is not going to be a good thing. And she would, I don't know what would have happened to me if I hadn't met her. And, and look at you now, you know, major book tour for this, over 2 million copies of your children books in print, and you've impacted so many people with the work that you do. So I just yeah, want exactly. to thank you for that astrologer, whoever you were in New York <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> way back when. That's pretty awesome, Leslie. So we're going to go into our first commercial break. And we are here with Leslie McGurk, who just wrote The Power of Mercury, Understanding Mercury Retrograde and Unlocking the Astrological Secrets of Communication. We're going to talk about Mercury Retrograde, how you can thrive in it, and how you can get your chart read properly so that you can see the future that you have for yourself. We'll be right back with more from Leslie McGurk. Leslie, before the commercial break, we were talking about Mercury retrograde, DNA, seeds, and how astrology can make a difference in your life as long as you understand that it's there's lots of different ways to look at things. And you, how do you go about putting somebody's chart together? What I need is the birth date, the exact time, and the place of birth. And I have a computer program. It used to be I had to do them all by hand uh, because I've been studying astrology for over 30 years. And then what I do is I get uh, through the uh, computer program um, a map. It's a diagram of what was above your head when you were born. And it's a geometric uh, map with all the angles of where planets were in relationship to other planets. And why is it so important to understand where each of the planets are? Well, see, what most people don't know is that we have many different zodiac signs inside our chart. Most of us just know we are, let's say, a Leo sun sign, and they just get fixated on just that. But there are so many other things in the chart because every single planet ends up in a different, usually it's a different zodiac sign than your sun sign. And the reason it's important is because I think actually the sun sign is the least interesting thing in a chart. And yes, that's your most main of the books sign. On astrology are are about sun signs, but I wrote this book because Mercury, I think, is incredibly important for relationships. Because if you can understand someone's Mercury sign, it will tell you how that person thinks, what kind of sense of humor they have, how they use language, how they're going to fight, how they're going to comfort you. And so the book, um, probably because I've been single for most of my life, adult life, I've used this as a way to understand guys I've been dating, and it's extremely helpful. So originally this book was mostly going to be a handbook for single people 
who are dating, but then my publisher said, Leslie, but this is useful for everybody. Let's say a mother and daughter who are having trouble communicating, or if you go to a job and you have trouble with your boss, it would be so good to know what their Mercury sign is so that they could look up the comparison and and figure out how to work with it better. And so that's why the book sort of became a, a bigger, broader topic. And you have some resources to help people figure out where their Mercury is. Yeah, there are a couple to- things. They can go to my website, lesliemcgork.com, and there's a Mercury calculator. Uh, that's one way to do it, that you can find out your Mercury sign for free on my website. But the other way to do it is to buy my book, and my book will tell you whether or not you are born during Mercury Direct or Mercury Retrograde, and then the book will also describe your Mercury profile and then the, the other one of the person you want to look up, and then you read the combination of the two. So the book is the the manual to help you understand. Yeah, and I, I read the entire book. Oh, um, good. So your your publisher sent it to me, wow. Suzanne Wickham. Thank you very much. By the way, this book is awesome. I love it, love it, love it. And I, I couldn't put it down. I just, I think I read it in the night. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good sign because I made it for people who know nothing about astrology who are skeptical, who don't really believe in it. Those are the people who I want to have pick up the book. Well, you know, I love how you actually start out in the book talking about the history of astrology and and Mercury and the impact it has on it. And then in a very simple way, you explain the different things. So I, my sun sign, I guess you'd call it, is Gemini. That's my birth sign. Right. And, and what's your Mercury sign? Mercury and Taurus. Okay. And you were born during Mercury Direct, correct? I was born during Mercury Direct, yes. But, you know, here's the weird part. I used to always say hi to your puppy. I, I, I about that. <laughs> we're all dog fans here, okay, so my, my listeners love dogs and pets and animals. And if you don't, well, you know, you love me anyway, so there you go. Um, I used to always do so amazingly during Mercury Retrograde, especially with my tech company. We just seemed to be able to always resolve whatever issues were and... Now, all of a sudden, it seems like during Mercury retrograde times, I have a harder time with things. Does it change at different No, parts? it doesn't change. But what's happening is that so many people are talking about it now. You're probably more aware of it and sort of fixating it on it. I think that it's crazy the way people get all psycho about Mercury retrograde because all the other planets also go retrograde. Venus goes retrograde. Mars goes retrograde. So when the, they go retrograde, how come no one's talking about that time. So it's just become part of our vernacular, which I'm not sure is terribly helpful. But I do believe that during Mercury retrograde, it is true that things do get kind of wonky for many people. And so it's not, you're not imagining things. It's true. But just don't get too hung up on it. It's basically what I think. Yeah, it's just so strange because, you know, things would go crazy for all of our clients with all their technology, communications equipment. And they'd call us up. And I started to notice a trend. Like, because all of a sudden the calls would increase dramatically. And then I go, oh, I wonder if Mercury's in retrograde. And I'd go look it up, and it was. And it was like, okay, fine, we just deal with whatever, you know. And now it just seems like it's harder for me to bounce back. I'm wondering if my resiliency muscle is a little not as good as it used to be. Well, it could also be that natally in your chart there could be something going on by a transit, which is the weather forecast of how the planets move all the time that's affecting you in the communication area now. So it's very complicated. It's hard to know exactly, but people have no concept that your natal chart does not change. That's your, your, that's your seed imprint, but the, the weather pattern is always changing in the sky with the other planets affecting us as weeks and days go by. Which is why it's a good idea, if you've had your chart ever done, to reconnect with somebody to tell you what's going on now for well, you. Well, yeah, it helps. I know that I, my parents, when I was born, uh, I think it was Maxwell House Coffee or Chock Full of Nuts Coffee, had this offer for an embroidery kit, and it was a chart done by an astrologer in an embroidery kit, and you had to send all that information, birth date, location, time, everything, and then they sent you an embroidered chart. I just found it the other day. That is so cool. I never heard of such a thing. That's awesome. Yeah, and you know, uh, I it was half started but never finished. So I I was going to bring it to the studio today to show you because I thought you'd get a total kick out of it. Um, and I'll have to show it to you another time. And, and you've got your book signing here in Vero Beach Thursday night at the Vero Beach Book Center at six p.m. 
Yes, it'll be an amazing event, and um, I will be talking more about astrology, how the book works, answering questions, signing books, and then afterwards um, there's a celebration at Costa de Este by the pool if anyone wants to come. And that's sponsored by Portfolio Magazine here in yeah. town, Penny Tranchilla. Yeah, Penny's been amazing. I've been writing her um, astrology column at the back of the magazine for over a year now. Maybe it's two years. I've lost track of time. So she's been an amazing supporter of mine and has done a great job with the magazine. Yeah, she really has. I love that magazine so much. And we were just talking about you last night on the phone. So <laughs> Good. <laughs> Um, and it, you're just making me realize I need to get my chart done again. And we've been talking about it for as long as I've known you that I wanted to have you do my chart. So that is going to happen now. All right. So let me ask you a question about Mercury and relationships. You know, we mentioned on Mercury Taurus, you have these uh, resources on your website and in this fantastic book that everybody should have in their, in their household. Um, why? focus just on mercury you said that it really impacts communications therefore relationships yes um what i feel is that when we're looking at how we get along with other people sun sign astrology is too basic we're not finding out enough about that person i if i want to know why i'm not getting along with someone or why i am I, i need to understand how their mind works how they're going to be in a, in a stressful situation, and Mercury is, is the planet that can tell us that how that combination will be, and so that's why I think it's the most important thing for people to understand the zodiac sign that you were that Mercury was in when you were born is the probably most useful thing to know in any relationship, and that nobody knows about that, nobody's talking about that. It just seems so complicated yet so simple at the same time, the, the whole concept. And the, there seems to be so many pieces to, to do with, like, all right, I'm looking at Mercury Aries meets Mercury Pisces in your book. Right, and you're that's saying, not the easiest combination, right? And, I mean, how does somebody, when they look at your book... And they go, okay, my, let's just use spouse. And I probably should have looked up my two ex-husbands, but I didn't. (laughs) You look at this and you go, Mercury Aries will unknowingly ride roughshod over the delicate Mercury Pisces. If somebody's in a marriage or in a relationship in this kind of thing, what, how do they interpret this? Because some people may go, oh, I have to just get out of it. There's no way I can do anything with it. But that's not what you're talking about. You're talking about there are ways to make this work. There always is. And by the way, this is just one eighteenth of, of what the whole combination of the two people's charts together make. All right. So and and we're, so Leslie, about... we're going out to commercial. I'm sorry. We'll be right back. Uh, okay. Welcome back, everyone. If you're just joining us live on the air in Vero Beach, Florida, we are here speaking with Leslie McGurk, the author of The Power of Mercury, Understanding Mercury Retrograde and Unlocking the Astrological Secrets of Communication. And if you're listening to us on the podcast, welcome back. Hope you had a good time during that like really, really short break for you, like more like a sneeze break. Anyway, Leslie, we were talking about relationships and how important the Mercury position in your chart is to help you understand and have better relationships. So can you continue along in that conversation explaining why you feel it's so valuable? Okay, so in relationships, you could have great sexual chemistry and your sun signs could be matched up perfectly according to all the astrology books. But if your Mercury signs are in some kind of conflict with each other, it doesn't mean you have to end the relationship. I don't want people to think that. But you do need to know that having somebody who, who is sympathetic to the style with which you think and use words is a really useful thing in any kind of partnership. But what's important is that is if there is a difference between the two communication styles, it helps to know that so you don't feel like you're crazy. Because if you have a parent who has a very feisty way with words and then there's a daughter who is very opposed to speaking up at all and is quiet and soft-spoken, those two, it's not that one is good and one is bad. It's just that the combination is very difficult for the two together. So I want people to just understand that people are not going to change their basic nature, and it doesn't need to be changed. You just have to have an awareness of it, and from then I think it's going to be much more peaceful for the two people. Is it possible 
for a relationship to thrive if the two Mercuries are so opposite of each other? I mean, you can try all sorts of different things, but is it necessarily something that is the best thing to do to keep it trying to work? It only it will work if the other things in the chart are, are very nice. If not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't stay with it. That's my personal opinion because it's just too hard to be with someone you can't communicate with. I mean, that's not fun. It's difficult. No, it's, it's totally not fun at all. Um, I had, before I moved to Florida, I had my chart done by somebody up north because I felt like something had shifted for me and I needed to make a change. And my parents were down here and I knew that I needed to move closer to them because I wanted to be closer to them and be able to help them as they got more mature in years, as my mother would say. And I know she's listening today, so I don't want to say older, because mom <laughs> would be like, no, we don't get older, we more we get more mature. Yeah, get uh, seasoned is the word I like to use. Get seasoned. Oh, I like that. That's an even better word. Mom, we're going to use seasoned instead of mature now. Yeah. Um, so I had my chart done, and then she said, well, I hear you're thinking about moving. Let me know exactly where you're planning on moving to and we can figure out if that is a good place for you to go to and when she did my chart where I was currently living and she did my chart where I was going to be moving to it was really clear that it was things were done for me where I was living and that where I was going to be going to if I did decide to move um, opened up so many more possibilities and so much more light came into my chart what what are your thinkings around that, and how does that play into other aspects of life? Well, there's something called an astrocartography map, which I do for my clients. It's actually a map of the world that tells you the best places to go according to your astrology chart. I know it sounds like how could that possibly be accurate, but I got my chart done when I was 19 after seeing that astrologer, and I've traveled all over the world. I've been to Australia, New Zealand, South America, Asia, I have tested out the validity of that map, and I tell you, it is accurate. And I use it all the time because there are places where life is just easier for people. And I have one great story, Laura, I have to tell you. I have a client who, in her late 60s, had not been married, um, had 15 cats, had had gastric bypass surgery. And I look at her chart, and I I thought, wow. Uh, And it's somebody who I had met, so it wasn't just a total stranger on the phone. And I knew that she wasn't exactly what you would call, you know, the dating type. And yet her chart showed that she was meant to be married. She was meant to be in a relationship. And I thought she just got off on the wrong track. And I said, wow, the the weather forecast on your chart right now is showing that you can meet somebody. And then I, for fun, just looked at the astrocartography map, and I saw that she had Venus, the planet of love, going right through Cuba. And I said, listen, this winter, you need to get yourself to Cuba. Go buy some cute outfits and get down there. I was sort of kidding because I didn't really think she would do it. But she did go to Cuba. And in a few months after she got back, she emailed me and said, you won't believe this, Leslie. I was there. I met a guy who lives 10 miles from me in Seattle. We're now madly in love and living together. I have goosebumps all over my body right now. I have so many stories like that I could tell you. And it's like, again, this is not fortune telling. It's just this is where she would flow. And think of how useful that is if you're struggling in a job and nothing seems to be right. It could be that you're living on a a particular line on the map that's just hard. And I I just am all for things to be easy. That's my motto. I believe that too. And and I believe that if you're listening to the show and you feel directed to to explore Mercury retrograde some more or have your chart done, then God, the universe, or whatever you want to say, or whatever you want to call that, is going to guide you to that. There's a reason you're listening, right? And you'll know in your gut whether it's the right thing for you. Right. So, so thank you for uh, being able to be here, even being sick. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. It's just My brain is good. It's just my voice is lousy. (laughs) Well, here's how I look at it. We're on live radio. Anything can happen. Dogs bark. Storms happen. Power goes out. Phones stop working. You know what? It's like Mercury Retrograde every day here in the radio station. You know, we just have fun with it and you go with it and you learn how to work with whatever patterns are going on at the time. You can get upset about it or just be okay with it. Well, that's exactly how I believe we all need to look at astrology that way, too. 
that there's nothing negative in someone's chart. There are definitely some challenges that are in everyone's chart for the most part. I don't think I want to be one of these people who comes in with a chart where there are no lessons to learn. Those people are what I call human jellyfish. There's no structure to them. There's no muscle tone. And, yeah, they have an easy life, but it's not that interesting. So I think going with what is is the way to go. I love um, on page 55 of your book, 54 and 55, you describe Mercury retrograde to a car where you're, you've got your car parked. And when you drive a manual transmission car, you need to press on the clutch and put the car in neutral before shifting to the next gear. When a car is in neutral, it means you don't have as much control and things can go wrong. That is exactly what Mercury retrograde can feel like. And then you talk about looking at neutral periods of time as openings where things can come together. That's not a way I've ever heard anybody describe Mercury retrograde as sort of a neutral time. Yeah, it's neutral. It's a time to reflect, review, any of the RE words um, are are perfect to describe what you should be doing, doing during those times. And whatever is breaking down, it's usually not that serious. It's just sort of like your toaster's broken or your car has a minor problem, not a major one. And you, you have this great last line. It is useful to know when it is going to rain so you can bring an umbrella. Yeah. I mean, people could say, Oh my God, it's so bad. It's raining. And I'm like, no, it's great. The plants need to be watered. Why is it that mercury retrograde has become such a negative thing? I don't believe that it is at all. If we didn't have it, I think we'd all be crazy because we are in such a high RPM fast world that if we don't take time to slow down, we're just going to burn out. So I think they're beautiful times and we should be grateful for them instead of dreading them. And of course, again, you got to find out if you were born during Mercury retrograde, because then you know that's your best time. My, this show is all about helping people shift their perceptions by introducing them to people like yourself and my other guests who give them new questions to ask. So what is some what is a question that somebody should be thinking about right now if they're beginning to wonder what's going on in their life and they're starting to think about astrology? What's a question they need to ask? Well, I think anyone who's interested in having their chart read is um, going to be surprised at how incredibly useful it is to have your owner's manual looked at. I tell all my clients that I save you thousands of dollars in therapy because I can get right to the core issue. I I work with uh, several doctors, um, psychotherapists in town actually, who originally did not believe in astrology, but now they have found um, that there's something to it because I'm like a a diagnostic person. You bring your car, quote unquote, you in to see me and I look at your owner's manual in your car glove compartment. I look at the four tires and I lift up under the look out under the hood, but I can't touch anything in there. I'm not a doctor. I'm not, I'm not a therapist. And there are some things that I say, look, you really need to go work on some therapy on this area of your life. And I'm a big fan of EMDR therapy. I work with um, Dr. Andrew Dobo in Sebastian. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he does something called EMDR. I love EMDR. I didn't know we had anybody local doing it. Oh, he's fantastic. And he's got a book out called Unburdening Souls at the Speed of Thought. And um, there's also on his website an interview with um, Dr. Dobo and myself talking about the combination of astrology with therapy. And it's a great combination because it makes everything really quick. You get right to it. You're going to have to introduce me to him because he sounds like a great another guest for my show. Absolutely. All right. So I love the quote. You said, astrology is your owner manual, owner's manual for life. And with that, we will be back with more from Leslie McGurk talking about Mercury retrograde and the power and how you can thrive during times of Mercury retrograde. We'll be right back with more from me and Leslie McGurk. I can't believe the show is going by so quickly already, Leslie. Um, we've been talking about the power of Mercury in your life, but more, even more than that, we've been talking about how astrology helps you get the most out of your life. I mean, I really think that that's what you've been saying in my own personal experiences of astrology, as long as you have an astrologer that is a positive one and not one that can be that doomsayer, that negative fortune teller kind of person. Right. 
it's yeah, it's very, really important to realize that, like anything in life, whether you go to a doctor or a lawyer, um, you just want to make sure that you're going to someone who's skillful. And I think it's rare to find um, the best of, of any profession. You just have to do some searching to get them. I know I've had good and bad experiences with pretty much every profession <laughs> right, exactly. out there that I've ever encountered. Uh, I want to make sure that we remind people again that are local and listening to this show live or listening to the replay before um, Thursday, September 29th, you have a book signing here in Vero Beach. Yeah, it's at 6 o'clock, and it's really important to support our local bookstores. We're, we're very lucky to have an incredible store, and they're becoming so rare around the country, and they're treasures. They're, like, incredibly um, important places for gathering and to have new thoughts shared, and um, they're doing an incredible event on Thursday night. They've put a lot of thought into it. It's going to be fun. And um, afterwards, there's an event at Costa de Este Hotel by the Pool, sponsored so, by Portfolio Magazine. So 6 o'clock, Thursday night, Vero Beach Book Center, September 29th. And you're doing a book signing, and there's going to be lots of fun going on. I'm going to be there, everybody. So if you've never met me in person, this is your great opportunity to meet me. Please make sure you come up to me and say hi. Um, I'll be there with my mom. So, and we generally sit on the left side facing where Leslie will be uh, doing her, her signing and speaking from. So I look forward to it and I will be going over to Costa d'Este. Um, that's Gloria Stefan's hotel on the beach. And I'd love to have a cocktail with you and, and chat and talk more about astrology and your ideas about it. So please join us and, and come meet us six o'clock on Thursday, the 29th. You know, Laura, I just remembered something I wanted to share with you is that Carl Jung used to use astrology all the time, uh, and he was during the time of Freud, and Freud wrote to him once and said, listen, you've got to stop doing this astrology stuff. People are going to think you're crazy. It's, it's nuts. And, and Carl Jung wrote back to him. He said, I don't care what you say. It's too accurate for me to ignore. I'm continuing to use it with my patients. And I think that that's really brave and wonderful that he did that because for many years, Nobody in Vero Beach knew that I was an astrologer. I was terrified of having people think that I was a fortune teller or that I was crazy. And it became evident that it was time for me, according to my chart, to accept the fact that I have a gift and I need to share it because I'm help- helping people in a big way. And to me, I feel very strongly that I'm in service in this lifetime. And I could just be in service so much doing and illustrating children's picture books, of course, that's a, a way of healing, but this is a much deeper way of doing it. And when when the person does the highest version of their chart, which is like playing your song the best way possible, everything flows then. And that's what happened to me once I basically came out as an astrologer. I found this amazing agent in California who sold my book, to Harper Collins, and they are so um, supporting me that they've put me on a book tour, which, as you know, is extremely rare in the publishing world right now. Incredibly. Yeah, there's, and there's just so many things happening um, that are positive and good, and I think it's because I'm doing exactly what my chart would most like me to do, according to my owner's manual. And you've taught at the Golden Door Spa, Rancho La Puerta Spa. I mean, you, you're renowned in doing astrology, yet you had a double life. Yeah, I did. I didn't, I didn't admit it until about four years ago that I was actually um, able to do astrology charts. And I started by teaching at Rancho La Puerta. It's a spa in Mexico. It's like the number one destination spa in the world, according to Conti Nast Traveler magazine. And I've been very fortunate to teach a creativity workshop there for many years. And um, the other thing I do, which we haven't mentioned, is I do workshops in the corporate world on creative thinking. And that's what my TEDx talk that I just did um, at UCLA on the 15th was about. So I have these two very different parts of my life, corporate speaker uh, and then an astrologer. It's a really interesting combination. <laughs> and, and a children's book author. author two, yeah. million, two million copies of your books in trend. In print, that's just amazing. That's, it's a lot, yeah, a lot of uh, international editions and sixty languages. So, and this is coming from a person who had no training in art. Was told repeatedly that I had absolutely no talent, 
that astrologer told me otherwise, and I believed her rather than anyone else. But okay, I, Leslie, I don't, I don't know if you moved to a different spot of your house. The phone's but crackling. The phone's crackling. There you I'm go. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, that's better. Good. So you were talking about the creative and this other person. Well, the astrologer is the one who told me that I was creative, and so because of her belief in me, I continued on that path, but most of the world was telling me just the opposite, that I didn't have any talent, that I would never get published. And my children's books were rejected for 13 years before they were published. And so. your children's books feature a dog, correct? Well, most of them are about dogs. Uh, Tucker is the series that I sold the most books um, about him. And then there's a book called Wiggins Learns His Manners at the Four Seasons. That's about a little chocolate lab puppy. Uh, Tucker was a dog that I used to have. He was a Westie. And then um, I have If Rocks Could Sing, which is a book of all the rocks I found here on the beach in Vero of every letter of the alphabet in rock formation. So that's a really cool book. I, I love that you have that. And you have a, you created a company called McGurk's Quirks. Yeah, design company. I started that when I was 25 years old. I've basically been self-employed as an artist and writer for my entire life which is, as you know, extremely unusual. <laughs> very, very unusual. And I want to make sure that people know how they can get a number of the free resources that you have associated with your book, The Power of Mercury, Understanding Mercury Retrograde and Unlocking the Astrological Secrets of Communication. I read it in one night, everybody. This book is amazing. You do not want to put it down. That's how good it is. And it's uh, something that you can just refer to time and after time again. And your your website, Leslie, is Leslie, I'm trying to save your voice a little Thank bit. Thank you. LeslieMcGwork.com, and it's L-E-S-L-I-E-M-C-G-U-I-R-K.com. And up on my website, it's all about the questions.com. I'll also have links over to that. So if people um, are uncertain, they can always link over to your page from my page. Great. Thank you. So what's what's next for you in terms of astrology, your chart, Mercury? What's next? I'm right now starting to work on my second adult book. It's still in the beginning stages of getting developed, but that's one thing. And then I've also got a line of stuffed animals that I created about all the quirky sea creatures. So I'm working on that as well. And just those two things alone, plus doing readings for people that keeps me pretty busy. Yeah, you said you're booking out to February and March now since you've been on your book tour. Book tour right. And, and I'm like, okay, I got to I got to email right now and get on <laughs> get on your list for a new a new reading of, of my chart. Last thought you'd like to leave my listeners with. Just that I hope they can come to the bookstore if they're local. I'd love to meet them and I also hope that for people listening who really don't understand astrology and have not really believed in it, just entertain the possibility that I may be correct about what I'm saying, that there is this this fantastic tool we have for navigating our life and that if we use it the right way as a navigational tool, it can save a lot of aggravation. So hopefully the listeners will be open and at least, you know, get the book and, and see what you think. And I, I think most people are going to be surprised by what they read. And as you said, it's a, it's a really easy to read book. And for me, it's one of those books that's very comforting. You're going to want to buy your bedside table because it's going to bring peace to your life because you're going to say, oh, no wonder my, my brother drives me crazy <laughs> or no wonder I love this person so much. Totally perfect. And I highly recommend everybody get the book. Hope to see everybody Thursday night at the Vero Beach Book Center, 6 p.m. And then the after party. Thanks for being on the show, Leslie. Thanks, Laura. See you soon. Remember, everybody, the right questions can change your life. So what are you asking today? You've been listening to It's All About the Questions, starring Laura Stewart. Connect with Laura at itsallaboutthequestions.com and download a free workbook that will help you ask better questions starting today.